Hi all. So last weekend there I went down to Guildford. I decided to venture south for once and I went to Storm in the South East. This is a new tournament that's been run by Grant Alexander um, at Cyber Activity on Twitter if you want to follow him. And it was a nice little um, Kings of War tournament. There were 14 people there in attendance, um, 14 if I'm right. And it was in a nice little venue. It was in an old folks home. Well, not really an old folks home, a day care centre. There weren't any old people there when we were there. So it was um, quite spacious. It was a bit warm when we showed up, but they opened all the wind doors and sort of um, got the fans on. It soon cooled off. It was actually really nice. Nice, friendly, bright and airy kind of place. Really friendly run tournament. Um, using standard Clash of Kings rules, um, standard scenarios. Nothing majorly different that way. Um, so I went down, thought, go down, meet some new people, play some games against less of the usual faces we get up the north here and see how it went. So this is my rundown for the tournament. So first up I'll give a run through of my army. This is the herd army I've been working on for the past okay technically three years because I started at Warhammer but on and off I picked this up again late last year so it's maybe been about the last six months to finish off. Um, this was its first out in anger apart from a few practice games um, so we can see how we got on there. So first up we have two beast packs, basic chaff units, I think they're some of the best chaff in the game. Um, speed 10 nimble, fantastic. Then next to them we have the spirit walkers, so that's a troop of spirit walkers with the helm of the ram, so that puts them up to TC2. Behind them we have the good old delete button and the stampede, um, that's a horde and it's got the brew sharpness. And next to them we have the first um, guardian brute horde, so that's got elite. Then, um, next up, we have the characters. So, in the front and centre, we have the Guardian Champion, Naked. So, that's the basic sort of um, character version of the Brutal Guardians. I think I'm calling them the right thing. Then, either side of him are two Shamans mounted. Um, they've both got Heal 5, Bane Chant 3. I am one of them's got the Fireheart Amulet, so it can Bane Chant and heal in one round. And the other one has the Shroud of the Saints, so that puts its heal up to 7 dice. And then behind them is the Chimera that's got wings and it's also got the upgrade, so it's up to 7 attacks, 9 attacks, something like that, and Vicious. And then finally, we also have um, at the back then, the other Brutal Guardian Horde. Um, this one's Vicious, if the other one's Elite, or vice versa. Um, in front of them we've got a unit of Longhorns, so basic infantry troop, um, troop regiment even, crushing one thunderous one. And then next time we've got Harpies, um, happy trip again. Again, good chaff. Speed 10 flying. Awesome. So on to game one. Now, this was a um, dominate scenario, so it's the one with the big air in the middle. And we were using the latest Clash of Kings pack, so it was unit strength rather than points value that counted in the middle now. So um, trips are worth one, regiments two, hordes are worth three points. Uh, I was against Dave Musgrave, who had brought Kingdoms of Men. So we'll quickly run through his list. He had a regiment of shield wall, he had a horde of heavy pike with the hammer measured force, so that's quite a nasty unit, elite in the snare, fan, um, Felix, 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 that's the word I'm looking for, with the hammer measured force of course, so yeah, hitting on fours, wounding on fours, everything. Um, he's got four troops of militia, one of which had the flying hammer, he had a unit berserkers with blood of the old kings, he had two knight regiments, one of the potion of strength and one of the potion of the caterpillar, he had some siege artillery, um, a hero on a pegasus with the diadem of dragon kind, an army standard bearer with the loot, a wizard um, with lightning bolt and an inspiring talisman. He was mounted, um, so was an army standard bearer actually. And he had two beasts of war, one of which was upgraded to have the ballista. So um, I've never really fought kingdoms of men before, um, and I forgot to start taking pictures early on, but my plan was relatively straightforward. I deployed. In the middle of the board with the Brutes, I'd put the Stampede out in one flank and the um, Longhorns and so what, Skimwalkers sorry, out in the other flank to advance through the woods. So here you can see this was about turn two, three, I think. So at this point, um, we'd had an initially, in the middle, we get stuck with a really ineffectual battle. I put the Harpies into his, um, he had these two units of Militia guarding the gap with his pike block behind so 
we both wanted to get the charge. I didn't want to get charged by the pike block and vice versa, especially with that. You can see the big um, gold rhino, that beast of war there. He shooting hadn't really done much. It had been pretty ineffectual in the home. But I put the harpies in. They wavered the unit of militia. Um, couldn't take it out. They promptly got them wavered themselves. And this went on quite a bit in the middle. We ended up with a lot of the chaff in the middle there getting wavered and blocking us up. Now... I wasn't massively bothered because you can see down the bottom right where my Guardian Brute Champion is, that was about the centre of the table, so I was dominating the middle, so if the pike block sat and looked to me that was great, but I didn't want to leave it in case it suddenly came free about turn 4-5 or five and caused me problems, I did want to try and get that middle bit killed. Now on the left, um, what had happened is, Dave had moved up both units of cavalry in the militia, and um, he left me a little bit of a charge on one of the units of cavalry with the stampede. So I'd moved my beast pack that was in front of the stampede out of the way, stacked the stampede straight through the hole into the unit of cavalry that the potion of strength wiped it out. And um, although I hadn't been able to block his other cav, I thought, the stampede can take the charge. They're in the woods, it'll be fine. So of course his cavalry comes in, I forgot they had the potion of caterpillar, but I'm still reasonably confident. But he also puts the militia unit in the flank, Bane chants him, and then the militia unit go and do six bloody wounds. Six wounds, you know, combined with the guys in front, and they manage to waver the stampede. So this is a bit of a problem. On the right hand side, you can see the Longhorns going into the shield wall regiment there and quite happily starting to chew through that. Now, um, yeah, and then on the far flank, the Chimera had been kind of sort of having a wee face off with that pegasus until i realized he wasn't actually going to move the pegasus and he was just planning breath weapons so i thought let's just get the chimera moved up and start him swinging him around the side um so here a bit later so the stampede got wavered you can see it's sitting there 12 wounds so i managed to move them back get the beast pack in the way they sidestepped in the way told the cavalry um to give the stampede time to recover um in the middle you can see there's some initial initial chaff exchange that went on and um the skinwalkers now came in and sort of cleared off after I lost my harpies. He cleared off his chaff. And on the right, you can see the shield wall's been taken down. Oh, there's the harpies, sorry, at the back. I flew the harpies over his line to get them out of the way to let the skinwalkers in. So, what happened? Well, on the right hand, on the left hand side, the beast pack was taken out. The militia hit the stampede, wounded them, and wavered them again. So, yeah, this is a kind of common theme with the stampede. And in the middle, the skinwalkers start to go in and hit that um, pike cord. Well, otherwise, everything else just kind of sits pretty. I keep that beast of war blocked up, but he eventually shoves it into the chaff in the middle. And you can see now the um, the harpies got taken out by shooting, I think, that were over there. So the chimeras started swinging around the back. Unfortunately, Dave pulled a clever one there with the chimera, because I'm, I'm quite lazy with it. It's size 4, I'm used to it charging. He parks his beast of war in front of it so the chimera can't see the back of any of the units. So that was slightly annoying. On the left flank, um, the stampede just keeps getting wavered, and you can see the winds building out. It's on 15, 16, 17 winds. It's only a matter of time, but the fact it keeps getting wavered has given me a, a bit of a help. I think his beast of war screwed up its initial push in the middle. The dice kind of fluffed there, and um, the beast pack survived. Um, then, as you can see, finally the skinwalkers got taken out, so I whacked the guardian brutes, one unit guardian brutes and the champion into the pike block and took it out, because the skinwalkers did a surprisingly large amount of wounds to it. The other guardian brutes took out the beast, and the chimera um, went in there to the, um, what do you call it, the... The Berserkers, that's it, the Berserkers and did a bunch of wins to them. As you can see here now, the, the stampede in the, the left flank finally went down, so I had to move the Shaman over to block that flank. So, end of the game, we went on for seven turns, the Shaman got took out, the Chimera died, um, but in the middle, I still held the objective and I managed to win the objective. So I won that one 13-7, not a big decisive win, but um, not a bad one. How did, so... Dice bothered me a bit in this one. Um, the constant wavering in the middle meant it took a while for me to get to grips with them. I didn't really play the right flank correctly. I did punch that door open pretty early on, but didn't really you know, get round there. The Longhorns got wavered as well, which didn't help. On the left flank, the Stampede, yeah, it was a bit of a letdown. See, my plan was to hold the centre and run the Stampede and run round the flanks. Sensible plan. But when the Stampede got wavered, it kind of all came a bit grind into a halt. I mean, the fact I managed to dominate the central bit um, helped a lot, but 
I don't think it was the finest generalship by on my behalf. Um, I had a lot of chances to do a bit better, I thought, but I'll take that. I, wa- I didn't play confidently enough, I felt, with the list at this point. And Dave played a very tight game. He made a lot of little clever moves, especially blocking my charges, which I just didn't see or account for. Um, especially that kind of year. He, that could have caused him a lot of damage when it got round the back and was looking at the back of his arm and he just shut that straight down. So a number of nice little moves from Dave there that really helped. He was a bit unlucky. Shooting on the hole didn't do much. The siege engine, the siege motor only started working towards the end of the game and took out one of the other um took out one of the Guardian Brook packs at the last throw of the dice there. So he got quite yeah, the last turn, turn seven he managed to scoop up quite a lot of points because he took out the Guardian Brutes, the Chimera, and one of the Shamans. So that gave him a lot of points that extra turn at the end, because um, I was quite fragile by that point of taking a bit of a pasting. Yeah, it was a good, good game on the whole, a good opener. Um, came out that one relatively confident. I was happy overall with how the army performed, but I should, the stampede was a bit of a letdown, but that became a bit of a theme throughout the day. So game two, I got drawn against Paul Fox, the current UK master. Um, Paul, I would an apology to, because... Um, when we did the Masters Review show, I looked at his list and my general description was, I wonder what he was smoking when you wrote it, because I couldn't work it out. Now, when I was playing him, he rocked up with a variation of that. He tweaked it since the Masters. And as he started explaining it to me, I very, very quickly understood how it worked, and it's actually incredibly nasty. So, um, yeah, well done, Paul, for that bit of filth there that no one saw coming. And this this is this is a hard list, hardest list I think I faced all weekend. And top of that off, Paul's a good player, so I knew this was not going to be an easy game at all. So it's got a troop of gargoyles for chaff, two regiments of tortured souls and three hordes, one with the potion of the caterpillar, one with brew of sharpness, one with blood of the old kings. So if you're unaware, the tortured souls, the hordes have 18 attacks, crushing two, life leech two, flying and shambling. So they can't march 20, but they still charge in 20. It's a troop of hellhounds, the abyssal har- har- harbinger, which is basically the BSB. He's got the Well of Souls, which again, hadn't really quite got that, but now the way the Well of Souls works is it allows it to suck wounds off its own units, sort of healing them basically up to 20 wounds. And it's got Life Leech 5, 10 attacks crushing too, so it comes in and can heal itself up. He had Ambassador the Vile, which is the Gargoyle individual special champion. Again, couldn't really work out the point of him because I'm like, well, the Gargoyle buff isn't fantastic, but actually... He's quite a hard character. Crushing 2, 8 attacks, melee 3, death 5, flying. He's quite nasty, actually. And then he had Cronius, um, who has breath attack 20, piercing 1 fury, pathfinder, and you can't waver him. So when I'm sitting deploying opposite this going, bugger, I'm in trouble. Um, his entire list flying, it hits like a ton of bricks. This is going to be difficult. So we were playing also aim um, control. It's only to control 6. You divide the table up into six sections, and whoever controls the table sections, the majority of the points wins. So here you can see him open the moves. I kind of deployed in standard race, stampede and flank, troops in the middle, um, brutal guardians in the left. And what I did was everything is just outside charge range except the skinwalkers, which are shoved up behind the wood but not into it. And I threw a little bait unit out of hellhounds, um, not hellhounds, sorry, um, beast pack out to the front just cause he either has to deal with it or it charges him next turn and hopefully locks one of the units down. Um, so next picture. So, yeah. I forgot about Cronius. He flew up, breath weaponed them off and sat outside range with almost everything else apart from, you can't see it there, but there's one troop of the um, torture Souls heading down the far left flank. So at this point, um, I decided I'm kind of stuck here. There's two options. Option one is back away and play for time, but that might work in some scenarios, but in this scenario, he's just too fast, so even if he doesn't fight me, he can easily get to wherever he needs to in the table to contest and get enough points to win. And it's not my style to play defensively, so I went tail with it and shoved it all forward. Literally everything. This Everything's now pretty much in charge range. I put both Brutal Guardians up, angled them. The Stampede is up just, just within charge range of the furthest right-hand um, troop of Tortured Souls. Um, I put both the uh, infantry units in the middle up and tucked the Chimera in tight behind one of them so it couldn't get charged and basically went over to you so I decided to I didn't really have a massive plan but I knew I didn't want to sit back so I was hoping for a little bit of a luck because Paul had been going on about the fact he rolls quite a lot of 
he suffers from quite a lot of double wins rolled against him in break checks, and he rolls double win quite a lot. Sorry, that's what I'm looking for. He rolls double wins quite a lot, so he protested quite a lot, and I thought, Let, let's play for this. Let's just hope somewhere, you know, something doesn't stick. Maybe, or maybe I'll get a bit lucky. So, as you see, Paul commits. He goes all out. So, one unit torture souls in against the Guardians, whacks two units in against the Longhorns, um, puts the troop in against the Stampede, and um, shoves the well, a lot of souls in against that beast pack on the right hand side. So he deletes the longhorns in the middle and um, takes out the brutal guardians, the guardian brutes are in the left. So what I then do is um, I put the in the middle the chimera and the skinwalkers go in and smash up one of the hordes. The stampede takes out the troop that was put in against it and I use the, the harpies charge the other unit of tortured souls on the right side so is to do a wound and lock it down while the guardian brutes uh, um, attack the harpies and try and take them out. So this point, that went about as expected. I had hoped the guardian brutes would hold, but on the whole, I'm feeling okay with this. You know, so far it's, it's, no, it's not good, but it's not going badly. So then we have a few problems. So in the middle, as we can see, the the Torture Souls take out the Harpies and turn to face. Um, on the right flank, the Stampede gets charged by another Tortured Soul Horde, um, takes some damage, um, counter-attacks so, and takes out that Tortured Soul Horde. You no, know, takes out that Horde. So that was progress. Um, when the Harpies got taken out, unfortunately, the Brutal Guardians now have turned to face, but when he took the Harpies out, after he managed to rotate just enough to get out the charge arc of the Brutal Guardians, I kind of made a bit of a screw up of the position in there. So that cost me the charge from the Brutal Guardians. So at this stage, I'm sitting there, the Stampede's on 10 wounds, and I think it did get wavered, I can't remember. I've got a Chimera still in the game. Brutal Guardians versus Tortured Souls. Basically, it comes down to, can the Brutal Guardians take the charge off the Tortured Souls? The answer is no. <laughs> Long and short, but the answer is no. He pops the Brutal Guardians, the um, Well of Souls pops a Stampede. So all I'm left with is a Chimera and the Brutal Guardian Champion. So I plug away, I try and do a bit more damage. But at that point, he's pretty much got the game and I call it there. Um, we, we play time, we, we get through the entire, all the turns, but I've only got the Chimera left and the Guardian Champion and no way to win at this point. Because um, he's still got that Horde sitting on my table half. So, yeah. Well played by Paul. Paul won the scenario. Um, yeah, because we can't see there's another troop floating around as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough matchup. There's no two ways about it. That army is hard as nails. It's a hard counter to me. I didn't really play it right. Um, I think if I could go back and do it again, I think I'd do a lot better now. I think I've, it was a good. This was a really. This was probably one of the key learning experiences for me this weekend. This game because. I'm really struggling against fast armies and this one it finally think I think it's clicked and how to take out an army that's much faster than me. We'll see. Um we'll see when I how I get on sort of going forward, but I think it might work. Um but yeah, so again, good game, Paul's a lovely fella. Um I went down hard. I think that one is an eighteen two loss. So yeah. Back down the table after that one. So next game I drew Leo Midwinter. Um with these Twilight Kin. Same, quite a, a lovely little army, this, well painted up. Um, Leo's a regular on Twitter if you can float around there at all. So, a quick run through of his army. He had a crossbowman horde with the Heart Seeking Chant. You can see he was out in the right flank there um, under his arms just now. Reaper Guard Troop, so just a basic chaff troop really. Two Blade Dancer regiments, one with Brew of Strength and one with the Helm of the Ram. Nasty little units. Two Gargoyle Troops. A uh, Dark Knight Regiment and a Bissell Riders Horde with the Brew of Sharpness. Dark Riders, sorry, of the Brew of Haste. Dark Scythe Chariot Regiment. It's tucked in the build and currently on the right hand side. Um, Dark Avenger and a Bissell Mount, so that's character with Inspiring Talisman. A High Priestess with Bane Chant and Blood Boil. And two Army Standards, one has the loot. So, this is when the new missions were. Can't remember its name off the top of my head, but your three most expensive units carry the tokens, and your opponent gets two points for killing one of them, and 
you, you get a point for keeping one of your units alive that's got it. So in my case, that's the two Guardian Brutes in the Stampede, and in Leo's case, it was the Crossbowman Horde, the Abyssal Riders Horde, and one of the units of Blade Dancers. So you can see I deployed pretty standard here, Guardian Brutes in the middle, um, split the infantry either side of the Guardian Brutes with the Stampede in the right, the Chimera flying up the left. So this was my first turn, I kind of basically pushed it forward. Now, I'd left that right flank open for the chariots, because I wanted the chariots to come down, then the idea was to block them with the dogs, just pull the dogs over and nip in and block that gap. Now, as you can see, Leo, first turn, was pretty cautious, just kind of, he was, you can see measuring here, he's basically making sure the stampede can't slip by that trip he's pushed forward. And he kind of moved some stuff forward, but he was generally cautious and kept most of it out of range. Um, that's just the same picture from a different map. So, then you start shooting. He does 12 wounds to the stampede and wavers it. I kid you not. The crossbow horde opens fire, does a bunch of wounds. Then the chariots um, shoot, him, shoot them, because you can just see them and do a few more. And then the blood boil kicks in, does 12 wounds and wavers the stampede. Not going to lie, I swore a little bit at that point. I did swear. So that was a bit frustrating. So that gave me a bit of a difficult situation here. So I went to hell with it and went for it. So... I think this is actually a turn after. No, no, this is it. So the Spirit Walkers went in and took out that little chaff unit you had in the middle. Yeah, this is at Leo's turn afterwards. So the Spirit Walkers went in the middle, took out the chaff. The Stampede turned a little bit. I threw the dogs that were behind the Stampede straight at the crossbow horde to force them to shoot at them, rather than the Stampede for a turn to give the, the chance to recover after I did the heal on it. In the middle, I shoved up the Guardian Brutes and threw some chaff in front of the Abyssal Riders and in front of the Blade Dancers. And on the left, the Chimera went into the Knight Regiment. Then in his turn, um, Leo charged back into the Chimera of the Knights and brought in the the Abyssal Rider Hero. The, ch the Chariots came zooming around the right flank. Surprisingly, he didn't charge, just moved them around for shooting. And he did a bit of counter-attacking on my chaff in the middle. So then what happened was um, a bit of an orgy of violence. So one of the Brutal Guardian units get into the Abyssal Rider Regiment and takes it out. Um, the other unit, I basically m spends a couple of turns and managed to munch through both Blade Dancer units in the middle. So I'm quite caught, I'm doing really well in the middle actually, it's going to plan. Left flank, not so much. Um, the Khmer got took out. Okay, not, not the end of the world, did expect that. I threw the Longhorns in, but they kind of fluffed it badly, they got Bane chanted, so they got a charge, so they're coming in at crushing three, wounding in twos, and when I'm rolling the wounds, I roll about four ones in the wound, and the, that that really much, really well below average for the amount of hits they did wounds cost me, because they would have broke the knights, and instead they didn't, got countercharged, I think they got wavered, and then they got taken out, and you can see in the right now, unfortunately, the stampede's gone by this point, and that chariot regiment's come screaming round into the back of the um, skinwalkers, so it's a bit, mm, a bit dicey. Um, yeah, I'm doing that picture again because it looks. So as you can see now, we end up in this situation where I can't charge anything, so I have to turn to face. So I'm now stuck, and it's basically down to the two brute guardians to try and hold off the, um, these guys. And unfortunately, they don't. The cavalry comes in against the left hand unit and takes out the right hand unit. He just shoots. So I managed to put the champion in against the crossbow horde in the vain attempt to try and break it. Very vain. And his abyssal champion comes up the rear, hits the Brill Guardians and takes them out. And that's game over. I lost that one. Um, where did they go wrong? Well, Liga's a good player. He played it tight. The waiver and the stampede, that caused me a lot of problems. Um, that, 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 that was kind of where it sort of mostly went wrong. There was a problem, but it was recoverable from. It was when the Longhorns screwed up and didn't take out that Knight unit. Because if they'd taken out that Knight unit, the Guardian unit would have survived that flank and it would have been probably a draw in all honesty because the Guardians could have easily taken those Knights out. So yeah, that was a bit of a, a bummer. But close game, very, very close game. Would I have played it differently? Yeah, I think my left flank on the whole, I played it fine with the Chimera, etc. And in the centre, I played it, yeah, went according to plan, right flank against Stampede, wavered, screwed up, no fallback plan, let those chariots come round, should not have let those chariots come round, should have put something there to block them. Yeah, it was 
yeah, I just I messed up that right flank, and that's what cost me because the chariots took out the one of the units, the skinwalkers, and that just kind of lost me enough firepower. And at that point, I'm sandwiched between two things. I'm going to get rear charged with something. There's just no way about it. So yeah, very well played by Leo on the whole. Took advantage of it. You know, I don't want to take anything away from the guy. He played it fine. You know, the, I had a little bit of bad luck, but the bad luck I had shouldn't have cost me the game. That was what cost me the game, I think, was I just didn't play it quite right, and I put myself in the situation where a little bit of bad luck cost me the game, if you like, if, if that makes sense. So yeah, Leo played it, played it fine. You know, his dice were completely average, I'd say, on the whole, nothing extraordinary to report. And there's one thing actually worth pointing, no double ones. Really, I, you know, I never suffered from, I never had the advantage of many double ones at all this tournament. In fact, I don't think I had any that were really worthwhile mentioning. And I didn't really suffer from any double sixes either, it was completely average. You know, my units were kind of pretty looking at breaking, they broke, and when they weren't, they kind of wavered. Like this game again, quite a few wavers throughout it, and I'm, I'm struggling with that because I'm not used to playing Undead, I don't really deal with wavers very well. So I went down that game, um, I think I lost 17-3, it was another big loss for me. Um, but that's where it goes. Last game then, I was against a um, lovely fellow called Daniel Greaves, um, old school metal like myself, spent quite a lot of time going over all the old gigs we'd been to. Ah, this was a good, fun game. It was, it was quite nice. It was one of those games, that, like the last game of the tournament, where you're really just not so bothered now, and we're going to have a bit of a smash up. Dan had brought um, Brotherhood. I've not got his list, unfortunately, but if I can remember correctly, he had two treb trebuchets, two units of archers. And their archers are quite nasty. They've got piercing, they've got um, ensnare to the front, I think. You can see them in the right flank. They are... Um, hordes, sorry, archer hordes. He had two troops of little traff troops. I can't remember what they are, but they're basically the junk kind of units. He had Robin Hood and his May band of men. Um, it's a archer special character unit. In the middle, you can see he's got a forsaken beastie. He had a sword, um, a spearman pike block. Sorry, pike block, a spearman block, a horde. And um, two troops of knights. Um, a lady mage who had um, a bit of zap and he had a general on a griffin and a hero on a horsey so deployment wise this this was another new mission so this is the mission where you place an objective from the center and one each of us then places one on the center line and if you can any of your units that are controlling that objective can take a token on themselves at the start of the turn a loot token and whoever has the most loot tokens wins bit of an interesting one so here you can see in the middle there was two loot tokens in that centre point and then there's one over on the far right hand side on the hill that you can barely see in the edge. I, I basically ignored that one and went for the two in the centre. So we got off to a good start here. Um, I pushed up, Dan pushed up. Um, I set the Chimera up for flank, I threw some beasties in, I threw the chaff in the middle to kind of hold them up, all good. Then... Dan attacked, he managed to hit the Chimera that's sitting out in the flank and waver it. In the middle, his Forsaken Beastie bounced off the chaff, and his Mage Lady shot a lightning ball at the Stampede, which you can't see off picture just down below, did one wound and rolled that. Yes, yet again, turn two, they were wavered. Honestly, it's become a bit of a bad joke with them. Um, so what happened in the middle was, he moved up, he flew his character and his exemplar of night over into my guardian brutes. I threw, you can see one unit started turning the flank there. It took out the exemplar with the hope it would overrun into the character, fell short by one inch. The other guardian brute unit went into the general in the front and didn't do much. Spirit walkers went into the spear block in the front and did a surprisingly good six wounds. Um, and on the left side, the Longhorns went in against one of the units of the Knights because they had initially set up for a combo charge with the Longhorns of the Stampede and the Chimera in the flank. It was going to be lovely and ended up with just the Longhorns going in and being a bit of a damp squib again. So not the most decisive of turns for me. But um, then I um, all kind of suddenly swung round. Um, I know it's a bit... Unfortunately, I forgot to take quite as many pictures here. But as you can see, the Pike Block, um, the Stampedes, the Stampede got into the Forsaken monster and took it out. The Guardian Brutes took out the character, 
got into the pike block. Um, the pike block got taken out by the Skimwalkers and the Guardian Brute Champion in the side, and they just annihilated it. Um, on the right, it's worth pointing out, he shouldn't was really bizarre. It would either do absolutely nothing in a turn or do loads in a turn. It was either, it was all feast or famine with his shooting. One turn did one wound in the Brittle Guardians, the next turn it's like doing six or seven. Um, on the left, I managed to finally get the Chimera free, got that and the Longhorns in again and took out that troop of knights and the other troop of knights was chaffed up. Stampede takes out Forsaken Beastie. And at that point, it pretty much kind of gone away. The other unit of knights was then quickly taken out. On the right flank, he had one small unit with a loot token. He ran another horde up and grabbed another loot token. Um, and I sat in the middle and just hoovered up all the loot tokens I could. And then he managed to take out the Guardian Brutes with his shooting. And I think he also managed to take out the Chimera. I took out one of the trebuchets as well. And that was it. And the game ended... Um, I can't remember the exact score from the top of my head. It was a win for me, but not, again, not a massive one. I think it was about a 17-3 for me. Yeah, about, about a 17-3. A good, good fun game. Um, there was a turn or two where it kind of hung in the balance. He's actually, that Robin Hood unit, I really have to call them out. They come in, they wound the Kimi, they charge the Kimi in the flank. I'm thinking they'll be fine. He does the wounds and um, does four wounds and wavers the Kimi Realizes like three turns later they they actually got t they've got ten attacks base not so they should have even doubled the number of attacks. They went into the side of the Longhorns and did more damage there as well. They were they were a horrendous little unit, <laughs> but yeah, on the whole, really good fun game. Good way to end the tournament. And final result, well, I came ninth. Um, Wooden Spoon went to Dave Sifford, call him out. His first tournament there with his Kingdoms of Men. Um, James Cockburn won Best Painted with his lovely Dwarf Army. Um, very nice little army. It's got an interesting paint style. It's kind of... Um, I always mentioned a bit of Borderlands almost. It's, it, it looks... you know, Especially from the distance. It, it sounds a bit bad, but from the, the way he's painted it, you, it looks like um, from a distance really good. It's got lots of folds in it, and it looks like the, the material's all rippled, but when you actually look close, it's just the way he's painted it. And he's also used yellow. Yellow is a horrendous colour to paint, he's done it really well so um, yeah, well done James for that, well deserved Best Sports went to Mark Cunningham um, he was, I think this was his first tournament as well, he'd brought in Dead, did very well Dave Musgrave, my first round opponent won the Charger Award, that's the Counter Charge, sorry um, Counter Charge podcast, which um, I think goes to whoever finishes mid-table and eventually the tournament was run by Dominic um, who had a horrendous looking Orc and Goblin army, not Orc and Goblins, I think it was just Orcs, that consisted of three hordes of Axe Goblins, three Troll Hordes, and then some War Drums. That was pretty much it, and maybe a Gore Rider Edge, but it was horrendous looking, I'm glad I didn't have to face it. So, how did I feel I did? M my, result, my ending result? Yeah, that's about fair, I, I didn't do great. Um, initially, I felt most of like it was the dice. I'll not lie. When I first finished the the tournament, I was about like I kept especially the stampede with the waivers. But as um over the couple of days now to ponder, I realised yeah I, I I made mistakes in all the games to some degree. Um, the list itself I still think works. The single stampede is a problem. I broke my golden rule because normally if something's worth taking in Kings of War, it's almost always worth taking twice. And I deliberately didn't want to take two stampedes, and I'm regretting that. I think I need to change how I work the stampede. I, I leave it sort of sitting out by itself, and I think I need to bring it more back into my centre and support it rather than leaving it out in the flank. I'm not quite sure I'm going to have to play around with my deployments a bit. Um, the Brutal Guardians were really reliable. That's the best thing I can say about them. They were really reliable. That's that's not a bad thing. That's a good way. They, you know, if they got an unimpeded charge off, they pretty much deleted anything they hit. They could take a punch to the face. They, you know, they they, they were generally my last unit standing a lot of the games. Good centre line, yeah. I'm, I'm really on the whole quite impressed with them. I've got, so the heal, I've got 12 dice of heal in the army and it was consistently rolling low. Well, it wasn't doing very well. I've had in the past heal normally works quite well, but overall for the tournament, the heal did not feel like it went very well for me on the very well. The Guardian Brute Champion, I now am slowly starting to like. I When I first got him, I didn't like him. I only had them in because the unit was pretty and I like the model, but I'm starting to come around to him. I need to use him better, though. I don't use him right at all. 
I'm, uh, he's kind of wasted points a lot of the time. I need to use him more aggressively. Longhorns, Longhorns are a bit disappointing. Whenever I ask, look for them to do something, they just fail. I'd rather have had another unit of Skinwalkers on the home. Chaff wise, three units of chaff feels fine. Characters feel fine. So yeah, I think the list on the list on the whole is workable. I just need to be a bit more wary with how I use things, especially that stampede. Got to stop relying on it to come through because it's gonna get wavered. But yeah, mostly it feels like me. The, I'd say. 70, 30, 60, 40 between me and the army. The larger amount's definitely on me. So I'm hoping for the up and coming Lone Wolf tournament, I'll be able to sort of um, pull it together a bit for that one. As for this tournament on the whole, really well done. Fantastic job by Grant. Um, Eddie, the game, I think he's a captain. Is the captain the right word? The chairman? I'm not sure what it is of the Guildford Game Society helped run it and did a lot of the paperwork. So, really nice venue, very friendly bunch. I'll definitely be looking to go back down there in the tournament again, not too distant future. And if you're down the south at all, I would highly recommend you look out for the next one and go along, because you'll have good fun. So yeah, that's it. Hopefully that was useful for you, and hopefully you enjoyed it all. Thanks very much. See you all later.